Hi, in this video we will look at all the design constraints for the battery buggy. The first one is around the size and shape. Well, they don't specify what shape, it's up to you. But yes, there is a limit on the maximum size. It cannot be more than 60 cm by 30 cm box. And there is no specification for the minimum size. So let's make this box of 30 cm by 60 cm. So hold on, you don't want to do this in animation. Let's do it on the whiteboard. So let's draw a 30 centimeter by a 60 centimeter box and the specification is that all the wheels along with the axle have to fit in within this box. If it doesn't, you will get a penalty and that's not a good thing. Let's see if we can fit in all the batteries. The maximum is eight batteries so we try to fit that in and we fit in this motor. That was a too tiny motor. Let me change that with this bottle. Uh, right, so we got the bottle. But hold on, I can actually bring them closer and I can reduce the size. And if I can draw another rectangle around all of this arrangement, my battery buggy now can be much smaller than the 30 centimeter by the 60 centimeter that they say. So, so this is the minimum, or maybe I can make it even smaller. So if I can, maybe I can take off some space in the front, there you go. So I can make it even smaller, smaller is lighter, which is good. So my battery buggy can be as small as what I'm showing here, or maybe there's another arrangement I can do for these batteries. If you notice, the batteries are the ones that are taking up too much space, not that motor as much. So if I, if I put these batteries in a different arrangement, although I have to make sure that they can still see the labels and they can read the batteries, uh, I, oh, the wheels won't just stay, but that's okay. All right, there you go, I got it. So it can be as small or as tiny as that. Now let's look at the construction material. I think wood is a preferred material because you can get wood that's light as well as it can. It is strong enough to support the weight of all the batteries and the motors, etc. So let's see what kind of wood we want to use. It has to be a light wood, but the lightest wood is balsa wood. May not be the strongest. So what's the lightest, strongest wood? It says pine or poplar. And my personal preference would be to use pine because you can get a lot of the pine wood uh, in different shapes and sizes at your local Home Depot or Lowe's store. So you might want to go with that. As far as the power source, we know it's going to take a maximum of eight AA batteries. You can use fewer batteries if you think that's going to be good enough. But again, I would prefer to use all the eight batteries. Types of motor, it specifies that we can use up to 12 volts DC motor. Now let's see what that is, a 12 volts DC motor. Let's see what comes up when we put it up online on Google. Uh, DC stands for direct current, so it takes direct current from those AA batteries. Let's see, 12 volts DC motor. There's several options you can see. There are several online stores that are selling these. My favorite store is Amazon, so it looks like they have a 12 volt motor with high torque and 1500 RPM. So maybe you want to check that out. Uh, let's let's see. I, I ordered one from Amazon, the one I was showing you before, but I don't think this is the same one. But uh, maybe, maybe, let's check this out as well. Let's see what this one looks like. This one actually might have a gearbox in it to reduce the RPM down to 1500 and a provide a higher torque so there you go yeah it's it's able to, it's got a gearbox that's why it's longer and it does provide the specifications provide about three newton torque so that's a pretty good motor actually and it's not very expensive as well so we might be able to use this but anyway I just wanted to show you some options and see where you can get it from now there's two keywords here rpm and torque so let's see what those two terms mean. Again, we Google it up. Revolutions per minute, which is how many times is the wheel going to revolve in one minute? And you saw the previous motor, it had 1500, which means in one minute, that shaft of the motor is going around 1500 times. Now let's look at torque. Torque is nothing but a twisting force, a force that helps turn the shaft in the motor or the force that will help turn the wheels. Now, is it why is it so important? Well, because torque is what actually helps to move the vehicle or the car 
from a stop position to a higher speed, right? So we wanna, the torque is what helps accelerate the car, right? It helps accelerate the car so the car can move quickly at a higher speed. So higher torque is required if the weight is higher. So if we have a battery buggy that is light in weight, then a smaller torque might do as well. So again, sometimes try and error works out and uh, it's always good to know the concepts there. So the small motor might be good enough as long as the, the, the size of the battery buggy and the weight is smaller. Anyway, let's look about gears. Uh, they don't specify, you could use either gears or pulleys. Now gears actually connect directly the axle to the motor. So there's a direct tight connection, but it's a little difficult to align it accurately. So you gotta be careful when you're building it, aligning them, you know, uh, correctly. Now pulleys allow for some flexibility in the connection, but they're not very sturdy. They may break, so the rubber band might break and, you know, it could be a disaster during the competition. So my preference is to directly connect through the gears, but pulleys work fine as well. And I, I've seen in the competition, um, several battery buggies use that. All right, the wheel size, no specification again for wheels or the axles, um, but we do want to use rubber wheels or at least provide a coating, some sort of a balloon or something wrapped around it so that we can get good traction. And we want to use bearings for least amount of friction between the axle and the chassis. Anyway, I hope this short video gave you a good enough idea about uh, the different design constraints. All right, good luck with your design.